Welcome to the TV broadcast of Accelerate Church. Pastor Jeremy File is teaching his series, Living Biblically. Did you know that doing what God's Word says can change your life? It can transform everything about the way you live. So let's join Pastor Jeremy right now for some instruction about just how to live biblically. If you love the Lord, how many of you say, yes, sir, I love the Lord? How many would tell me that? Yeah, you love the Lord? Well, if you love the Lord, then you love his word. That's a fact, Jack, <laughs> to quote Johnny T. If you love his word, you do what he says. That's why we looked at it last week, Luke 6, verse 46. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? It'd be better that you're asked that question right now than to live on this planet and take your last breath and face the King of kings and Lord of lords, who, by the way, his eyes burn like fire, John said. The same John that laid his head on his chest when he was here fell like a dead man when he saw Jesus in his glory in heaven when he was caught up to heaven on the Isle of Patmos. Yeah, you'd be better off going ahead and deciding today, I'm really going to make him Lord for real, legit, and follow his word than just go through the motions of saying it and not really care what he says. His question is, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? So when he says rejoice, he says, I don't feel like it. Are you your own Lord? No, you're not. So what do you do? Praise God, hallelujah, I rejoice anyway. Yeah, I didn't feel nothing. It ain't based on that. If he says rejoice, you rejoice. If he says shout, you shout. If he says, lift up holy hands, you lift up holy hands. Well, that's not the way I was raised. Forget the way you were raised. You see, there's the truth, and then there's everything else. And never forget, it's one of my favorite verses. John 17, 17, Jesus praying said, sanctify them. That's us. By your truth, he's talking to his Father God there. He said, your word is truth. The word of God is is the truth of the matter. I tell you, if you'll know John 17, 17, like you know your own name, then you're going to be okay in this end time hour. Why? Because you recognize that if it's in the Word, it's the truth. And here's my thing. If it's the truth, then what are you going to do about it? Because it's the truth no matter your color of skin. It's the truth no matter what country you live in. The truth is the truth for all of us, and only the truth and you knowing it and walking in it has the power to make you free. Notice he said we're sanctified. That means you're made holy. How? By the truth. What is the truth? The Word. So the only pure way to approach anything is through the Word. You are literally purified. You're made holy when you step out and do the Word. Yeah. Ephesians 5.25 talks about this. I told you I was going to double down on this. Back to the offering message. Here's what it says in Ephesians 5. Go ahead and say it one more time. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the word. Husbands. Love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that, verse 26 says, he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by what? Wow. You see, the Word of God has a purifying effect on your life. The truth is, if you don't base your actions on the Word in your business dealings, in your marriage, in your church attendance, in the way you are on the job, then I'm going to tell you, you're, it's going to get dirty. Now, you can't help, and you know this from the natural example of living in a body, but you're going to get dirty. And you're going to have to, once again, much to the chagrin of my two boys still, you're going to have to shower every day of your life. But why? I did it yesterday. Because you start stinking it doesn't matter who you are, no matter how pretty you look this morning. You had to put some effort into that. I can tell you right now, before I came to church, I sure enough showered and washed. You mean you need that, Pastor? I thought you're Pastor. Yep, Pastor needs it too. And just by living in this world, the dust and the thought processes and the demonic forces that are in this world will get off and touch your life. It could be sitting in a restaurant. You go to a restaurant, and they play music that they choose. You don't know who wrote that song, but what you hear through music, you remember. 
I've been in places where I'm sitting there eating, enjoying my time, maybe with my wife on a date, and a song will play. I like it when it makes me feel all these feelings toward my wife. I like all that. But then later on I hear it played, and it has a different feel to it. But guess what? The words stick with me. As soon as I hear the melody, the words come out of my mouth, showing it's very important what you allow in. Now that's why coming to a church like this where we're hot about our praise and worship, like we're going to worship and praise God, these songs should stick with you during the week. They do. How many times have I, even in morning prayers that we have Tuesdays and Thursdays, I've played a song and sometimes I've done it just because it sticks on my mind like one that's on my mind right now. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Praise his name forever. See, I like going about my day. When it's time for me to do all the duties I have to do, and that be on my mind, and I'll take a moment, I'll say, oh, I praise the name. See, I don't, I don't sing with melody, I know, but here I am singing in front of you. Of the Lord my God, he says it's a joyful noise, don't worry. I don't care if I'm flat or sharp. Oh, praise his name forevermore. Lord, I praise you forever. This is how I operate. This is how you ought to operate too. That's it. Why? That's what sticks with you. But, you know, if I'm listening to gangster rap, Come up in the streets and you, I'm going to show up. Uh, next thing you know, I'm going to show up mad mugging you when you come here. Come to church and pastor's like, yeah. Hit that beat in the back. Let's freestyle up in here. Now, I like the guys that do it for Christ that are creative and bold. I don't like the watered down mess that they call maturity now. It's the word that you need a steady intake of. Because it's the word that purifies you. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. We live in a culture where husbands love to tell the pastor, the Bible tells the woman to submit. Yes, it does. Before that, women, wives, submit to your husbands. That's true. I'm not doubting that. But since we like to say that, we need to stop and think for a minute. If God then is putting the responsibility of the family on us, where she's supposed to submit to us, then we're supposed to lead the way. And lead the way in what? Sanctifying and cleansing her by speaking the word over your wife. Not complaining to all your buddies about how your wife is a witch at home. Now, I hadn't heard none of that, but I came to tell you today, stop complaining and start speaking the word. It can change your wife if you'll speak the word. Now, there's a principle there that applies to all of us. Women, did you know it's not just a steadfast rule that you can't speak the word? You need to be speaking the word over your husband, too. We need to be speaking the word over each other. See, every day I pray for you, the partners of this ministry and the members here, and I say certain things about you, that you're blessed above the curse. You come out above and not beneath. That you have an anointing for the day and the task that are ahead of you. You have strength from God for that day. These are things I speak over. You may not like that, but I speak it anyway. Partnership has some benefits, and that's what it is. I'm going to speak God's word over you. I'm not going to say, oh, I hate these people. Get me out of here, Lord. I ain't going to talk that way. Some pastors do. You might be shocked. Why do you think so many pastors quit their job? Well, I would say it's because all the sheep dung they have to shovel around, but the truth is it's not just that. It's the wolves playing with the sheep, and the sheep love it so. It's amazing to me. If I'm going to stand before God and give an account, even for all of you that sit here today, whether or not you call me pastor or not, I'm going to give an account for what I'm saying. I'm going to give an account for your soul today, okay? Okay, then what I say is going to be probably, I'm going to have a lot more care taken about it, thought process by, beside what even maybe a well-meaning church member might say about the way it's going around here. Well, I don't understand why they think they need a Christian school. What's wrong with the public school? Well, first off, you're blind as a bat, but that's a side issue. 
You see, but you see what I'm talking about? So pretty soon you get a, yeah, why don't you get a Christian school? You get a bad attitude because you hear that word. You don't ever think about going up and saying, let me ask leadership. Let me ask pastor, well, why do you have a Christian school? Glad you asked. You ready for all these scriptures, you know? I can tell you why. We have a mandate from heaven to do it. That's just one area I'm talking about using as an example. But if you're not careful, see, what happens, you'll hear other people's opinions and voices. And that's not how you hear the voice of God. Now, God can use someone to speak to you. But let me just say this. It is very, very, very rare that God's going to speak to you from one brother to another, especially when they're in the parking lot prophesying business. If they don't run it through leadership, you don't need to hear it. It's not God. Why? Because they're not going to give an account for your soul. I am. Therefore, when someone, I think i got a word for somebody. I'm like, well, let me hear that. Because, see, I happen to probably know more about their situation than you know. If they've talked to me and told me, right? And if what they told me was the truth. Well, you need to know. See, people do. You need to know what's really going on. Well, then tell me. Oh, I can't tell you. They'd ask me not to tell you. Well, then move along, little Indian, because I'm, I'm not, not mad. I, by the way, I'm part Indian, so I'm not. Just so you know that. Y'all don't believe that. In the summertime, I actually, I'd actually tan a little bit. They don't believe me. I think it's my great-grandma. Was it my great-grandma? Which one was it? I don't know. I ain't got time to. Somebody there was full-blood Indian. So it came on down to me. That's why I'm a little wild, right? People get mad about anything. They really would. They really would. Listen to me. The Lord is preparing the church through the washing of the word. So husbands, understand this. If you're following God, there's power in speaking the word over your wife. Now, I want to tell you, that, that right there is just one little segment of life, and I'm, I'm showing you, breaking it down. This is how you live biblically, biblically sound. What? You do what the word says. And see, it doesn't really feel like revival, but that's revival. Revival is when you start doing the word. When you start living biblically, you, your whole life's going to go different. Yeah. So living biblically sounds easy on the surface. And in a way, it is easy. Remember the scripture, my yoke is easy, my burden's light. But you got to stay in that anointing. But here's one thing you need to know. Doing the word comes with persecution. That's why Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, say it just one last time for me today, thank God for the word. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12. This was after Timothy had lost 70% of the church he pastored. Many were martyred, but a lot of defectors were in the group too, according to scholars. And Paul, his spiritual father, wrote his son Timothy, who was a pastor, powerful pastor. He said, yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. By the way, when you live biblically, you're living godly. I, one thing I thought about when I was looking at this verse, it doesn't really say who's doing the persecution. It just says you're going to be persecuted. But as I got to meditating on that, I realized there's one thing I know for a fact, one thing I know for sure. Those who do not live biblically or godly, as revealed in the Bible, are usually the people behind the persecution of those who do. You decide you're going to live for God. I'm going to make my life a biblical lifestyle where, in other words, my life matches the Bible. I'm not going to try to bend the Bible to match my lifestyle. I'm going to change my lifestyle to match the Bible. When you do that, understand there's a lot of people that you know that are sweet, loving people. Might be family, might be lifetime friends that won't cross that bridge with you. That's, that's taking it too far. Doesn't take all that. God's not mad. He's not falling off the throne. All these little cliches people throw around. God's not a legalist. Well, he's not lawless either. The lawless one's soon to arise, the Antichrist. And if you're lawless inside, you'll fall for him. See, that's why you've got to deal even with secret sin. Well, I don't talk about it all the time, but you've got to deal with that. Why? Because that's an inward thing. Now, you don't need to publicly go make a big spectacle and repent, but you need to repent to God, and you need to drop that... That personal secret sin. you got to attack it. Now, if it's public sin, you know we will come against it. 
Kind of like that drag show that showed up here in town. We're 100% against that mess. That's perversion. They said people of all ages are welcome. Since when has it been okay to invite children to a perverted sex show? That's not okay. Are you hateful? I hate perversion. Yes. I'm 100% against it. Wow. Another thing for us to think about. If it's not Bible on what we're doing in our marriage, the way we approach our job, the business deal we enter into, the way we train our children, right? The way we conduct ourselves at the restaurant, the way we come to church. If it's not Bible, it usually leads to evil. Just why the next verse says, but evil, verse 13 says, but evil men and imposters. Who? Hold on, who's he talking to? He's talking to a pastor. He's talking about in the church. There are imposters. There are people that come and sit in church, but they're imposters. Well, most of those type run away from a church like this, but I'm not a dumb dumb. I know there's always those there. Why? There were imposters that walked with Jesus, that would see someone. Give Jesus a very expensive gift and say, that should be given to the poor. See, an imposter thinks they love better than Jesus, thinks they're holier than Jesus. That's an imposter. You've never been called and you can't do it. Love more than him. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Imposters never shout. You say, that's not my style. You have that in common with imposters. And they grow worse and worse. So here's it. You get stiffer and stiffer. Necked. But I'll be Stephen anyway and tell you, you and your parents and your grandparents and anyone else that you look up to that has resisted God, you better run for your life and you better soften that neck And you better start receiving what God has for you. Here's our day. Evil men and imposters grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. By the way, you'll never be deceived if you follow the Bible and you live biblically. You'll never be deceived. Verse 14, but you, I like this part. You must continue in the things which you've learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you've learned them. See, this is why you can't just log on to the Internet. And I appreciate all of you watching my Internet, but if you don't know me, then you don't know what my lifestyle's like. Nor do you know other preachers if all you do is stay from a distance. But you need to know somebody that's getting the Word to work in their life. And that's who you run to. Someone that is legit. Someone that God recognizes. Not someone that got their papers just from the internet. Taking a four-minute test. They're now ordained. Yeah, I, I was talking, another, it's been a while back, several months. Garrett's telling me about somebody we both know that was ordained. And we're like, that guy's got papers? What website was that? Well, you pay 20 bucks, you get them now. You better know who you are hearing things from. It matters. Well, I just like the truth. Listen, I've said this before. I'm going to have to say it again. A guy that I happen to like the spirit that he's got in the sense of he's always like, I'm telling the truth. I don't care what anybody thinks. And he's real. Like, I like that style, right? Because I kind of tend to lean that way myself. And I like that. So I'm like, I like that guy. And he quickly became one of my favorites once somebody told me and shared it on social media. And I liked it until I talked to my friend Chris McMichael, who's a pastor, a legit pastor, raising up an army in Cookville, Tennessee. He he said, because uh, he heard me talking to him and a couple other preachers. Man, that dude's bringing it, man. He's bringing the truth. You know, I'm all fired up about it. He's like, hey, uh, hey, uh, you might want to look out. I was like, why? That guy, he pastors just like 40 miles from me in my city, and he left his wife for a secretary. 
No. See, somebody says, oh, so you, you stopped sharing because of that? Yeah, because I know the Bible. I don't care. I mean, his message may match my primary message of preaching the truth and not holding back. But I can tell you right now, I ain't leaving this woman for any woman. I found her. I'm sticking with her. Now, you need to find someone that can make that happen because let me tell you, we don't always wake up in the best of moods just because of who we are. It's a decision we have to make. I know people don't believe, oh, you're pastor. Yeah, I know, so i got to exercise and make this thing work. And you do too in your marriage. Amen. And what you got to do is find people that are making it work and say, I want to know the secret. I want to make it. I want to go through this all the way to the end. Can somebody say amen? amen? You don't go to the person that's been married 10 times and say, how did you do that? That's what I want. I ain't mad at you if that's you. There's forgiveness. You can follow God and be right with God and make it to heaven, praise God. But you're going to have to change something if you want to be married and have a successful marriage. I don't go to people that raise total rebels. How did you raise those children? I want to do that. Isn't that amazing? A lot of people in our flavor of church, and I'm talking Pentecostal, full gospel, word of faith type backgrounds, they, they don't raise their children right. They don't know anything about training children. You have to learn from the Baptists because they learn that a lot better. Now, on the shouting part, they might struggle a little bit, right? I'm not mad. I love the Baptist. I love the Word. You know what? I, I probably tick with Baptists and click with them better than almost anyone because they have such a passion for the blood and for the Word. I'm just telling you, that, and I'm, I love all that. But I found this out, and it's true, in the past Pastor It's been this way for years. They understand most full gospel churches don't have a Christian school because they don't understand our future's right over here. Our future's not right here. But this word's for all of us. But it's, it's the responsibility of the older generation to teach the younger generation that they must continue in the things they've learned and ministered of, and they must know from who they've learned them. So what's the enemy going to do? Well, if you come here and you're like, man, I come here, that word, I don't hear this anywhere else. I come alive. I'm getting understanding. I want this. Then guess what? The enemy's going to try to come against that and make you question, well, I wonder if I can really trust them. Well, if you come in here and get planted, you'll see I'm this way, and you can ask my staff all the time. In fact, if they're not careful at staff meeting, and they push me too many times, I'll just say, get your Bibles, I'm going to preach. This ain't something I do up here for show. You catch me off on the side, I may start preaching at the drop of a hat. In fact, well, I don't remember what we were doing the other day, I guess it was a prayer meeting or something, and it was the Fitzgeralds. William comes up and starts asking me end time questions. You kidding me? This is accelerate church. Because we're at the end, things are accelerating. So I'm just blah, blah, blah. My wife's standing there looking at me, smiling. She knows. She's like, We gotta go. I know. I said, I know, but they're asking me questions and I want to preach. Because this isn't a show for me. I have a passion. I love the Lord. This isn't some show, dog and pony show, smoke and mirrors. The devil plays that game. Either you really follow God and you love the word or you don't. Either you know who you're learning from or you don't. Do you even know? You know, my favorite preacher, he's over there on YouTube. Do you know anything about his lifestyle? That's why I use that example. I don't tell you his name because I don't, I don't want to slander him. God can still use him and the truth can come forward and praise God. But I can tell you this, I'm not going to his conferences and I'm not going to sit there and learn and try to copy what he does. I don't want that in my life. You following that? And just because someone's famous doesn't mean they're right. Just because I'm on television preaching doesn't mean I'm right. This is what's right. Hallelujah. Verse 15. I'm not, I'm not getting, where's the time? Oh, man, I got to hurry. And that from childhood, everybody say childhood. childhood. You have known what? And folks, this is, you're in a church. We take this serious. From childhood, we've got to teach children the Word of God. And there's no way on earth it's going to work right the way God wants it to. If you give God an hour and a half, okay, you come here, two hours on Sunday for us to teach them the Word of God. And then they spend the rest of the entire week and they go and you submit them under people that 
if they are Christians, their hands are tied. They can't say anything about the Scriptures. Some have and some do, but just wait till someone gets disgruntled about that in that system because the whole system is set up to slap those people on the hand, and if they keep doing it, they'll lose their job completely. And that's a fact. I'm not making this up. But you come here, and every day at Accelerate Christian School, we have an emphasis on the Word of God. In every subject, we have an emphasis. They have to learn the Scripture. Every month, we have Scriptures on top of that. And you know what? Some people do, oh, my goodness, that's so much for them to learn. Well, what are we living for? When we study the Bible, I find out from childhood, Timothy knew the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation. What else are you living for? What's life all about? They'll stop a football game, cancel it, postpone it, even mess with the postseason, have to flip a coin because a guy dies. You turn on ESPN the night DeMar Hamlin laid on the ground there. They said, football don't matter. I've never heard that on ESPN my whole life. That's the whole reason they exist is to talk about sports. And they say, it doesn't matter. Amazing. A little sliver of truth went worldwide there. Seriously. And I pray God used that. He didn't do that to DeMar, by the way. And by the way, he, you know, he's back and doing well. Oh, that's good. That's fine. But I don't know that he's saved. He needs somebody to preach the gospel to him. Not just be excited, he's breathing. Because all of us are going to face this day. Red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in this sight, but we all face death. One life will soon be passed. Only what you do for Christ will last. And it's those holy scriptures that you learn when you're this age and younger that will get you through real battles in life. I'm just going to tell you, life sometimes isn't fun. The battles aren't always fun when you're in the midst of the battle. But I tell you, the Word of God will get you through every battle. The Word of God will get you through any battle. That's why living biblically is the most important thing in your life. Let me ask you this. If Timothy needed to continue in the Scriptures, do you think you and I need to? I think so. I think he was going through what most of us have never faced. He had a church of thousands and thousands of people. It was a hopping Hot church. 70% were lost from 1 Timothy to 2 Timothy. That's why God's speaking to him through his spiritual father, saying, you know what you need? Those scriptures. Wow, what a powerful, life-changing message when we turn from doing things our own way to doing them God's way. Well, there's more to this message, and if you'd like to hear it in its entirety, it is available on our website at AccelerateChurch.cc. Or we would love to have you with us in person at Accelerate Church in Amarillo at 4400 South Crockett Street. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. We would love to see you there. Or we'll see you next time here on the Accelerate Church television broadcast.